Umotar haadam min habehema ayin ki hakol hello. This is one of the lines that the rabbis uh, didn't particularly like, um, but we do say it. We do say it both ways. Uh, and it's actually it's one of the readings in the Yisker book as we have it also. Uh, the Book of Psalms says human beings have been created a little lower than the angels, right? Not the Elohim. Um, and here we have no. We're just like the beasts. Um, we're all going to die. Um, I find uh, I find something uh, humbling uh, in that concept. Um, and um, I, you know, I like to think I'm beast-like every once in a while. There is that Hasidic tradition, um, right? Not beast-like, but my, my 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 son says, "Wow, did you see that guy? He's a beast." <laughs> um, meaning he's good at football or something. But but um, there is that um, Hasidic thought that you're supposed to have two um, sayings in your pockets. You know, in one pocket you're supposed to say. Uh, the world, right, be freely in your alone. The world was created exclusive for me. And uh, in the other pocket, you're supposed to put, um, uh, I am but dust and ashes. Uh, and, right, you, you sometimes, right, you're supposed to walk in the middle of those two ideas. Uh, you, when you fall to one side uh, or the other. Um, but I think that, I don't know, we've probably all met some people uh, who need to be told, hey, um, you're also a, a, a beast, just like everybody else. Uh, humility is an important factor. I don't know. Anybody else want to comment on that? Well, to me, I mean, the problem here is that I, I don't think cows are aware that they're going to die. Or maybe they are. Probably not. But we are aware that it's And, and then he goes back to say that the problem is not that we're going to die. The problem is we spend too much time worrying about it. But, I mean, that's a legitimate human concern, is it not, that you <clears throat> that is the concern, but then when he says, no, so I've decided we're all beasts and we should enjoy life, what he's saying is, don't spend so much time, God, get, right, that's again that, what is God, we're afflicted by our brains. God gave us this human, this faculty that they don't have, right, um, and, and, and uh, don't do it, don't do it as much. Just to turn for a second to Psalm 49, if you have it. No. <laughs> Psalm, Psalms is the first the first section in the writings in Ketuvi, uh, if you have it. Psalm 49. Um, psalm 49 uh, is the psalm for the house of mourning. Um, but if you've ever been to a Shiva house uh, and read the psalm, um, they usually don't, right, the translations that we use, um, they, they leave out some of the lines. Um, like, in, like in, instead of saying, wait, wait, but, the, um, but anyway, the, the psalm uh, basically says, right, uh, we are all going to die. Uh, Hear this, all you peoples, give ear, all inhabitants of the world. The rich and the poor of the light, right, my mouth utters wisdom, my speech is full of insight. Right? Um, why should I be should, Why should I be uh, scared if God, that I'm going to die? Right? Shall anyone live eternally? Verse 11. For one sees that the wise die, the foolish and the ignorant both perish, leaving their wealth to others. Their grave is their eternal home, the dwelling place for all generations uh, of those once famous on earth. It doesn't. Right? This is uh, wisdom literature um, where the problem was you're going to get so wealthy, but don't bask in your wealth because. You're going to die just like anybody else. You're not going to take it with you. Um, that sort of way of thinking that Kohelet has of we're all going to die, and that could make you miserable, but it is the way of the world, um, we find that in other pieces of wisdom literature. The next, the next verse also says, goes down to compare man to beast. It says, man does not abide nana. He's like the beast that perish. Right. And then he said, right, and that's why he said, don't be afraid when a man becomes rich, for when he dies, he can take none of it along. Don't be jealous of other people. Don't spend your time worrying about all the things that we worry about. So what do we worry about? We worry about, I mean, we can disagree with it, but we, we worry about uh, whether or not we're going to die. We worry about why bad things happen. We worry about why other people have things that I don't have and, and I can't have, right? 
one way or another, they're saying the problem is not all of the unfairnesses that, that you mentioned. The problem is that you're too smart for your own good and you think about it. Disagree, go ahead. No, I said that I disagree. It just cuts into the whole you know, idea that, for example, in the high holidays, we're supposed to reflect, repent, return, you know, think about ourselves. Uh, when we die, we do we say the, uh, if we can, what is that called, the vidoy? The vidoy, yeah. Vidoy. So he, he's saying, or he's saying, don't bother with any of that. Just, you know, live, so eat, drink, be merry, basically. Uh, why think? Why pray? Why uh, just sort of accept that you're there, God's giving you something, accept your lot, and then you're going to die anyway. Yeah, well, so try to respond. If we read it that way as advice, it's, I will agree with you, that's bad advice. The fact that you actually modern, and my dad, as we're saying, the Rambam, the Rambam talks also about, sort of in the section we're learning right now, my little class, that when you die, he talks, you know, first of all, he talks about, you know, being good and evil and all that. But then he gets into specifically what happens, right? What he says is, well, the foolish, the Arabs, pretty much he's making fun of, believe the 70 year versions and all that business, and you're going to eat and drink in the world to come. And he says pretty much, no, it's a discontinuity. The world to come is a different place. You won't be able, it's not going to be like here. So I think bringing Kohala with Rambam, you would say, well, you eat and drink here because that's what we do, that's how we enjoy ourselves. Whatever happens after we die, it's not going to be the same. So, you know, the advice is do what you can do in this world, and then in the next world it'll be what it'll be, but we don't know that. Yeah. I mean, even if you kind of agree with So one piece, one piece is to not is to not worry about what you what you can't know. Um, I think that there's also a piece of there's it's not an accident that both views exist side by side. Um, in some ways, right, um, Kohelet is a check against the stuff we read on Yom Kippur, that God atones for our sins and God decides who's going to live and who's going to die. All the stuff that we described, it doesn't happen in, in our world. Uh, and Kohelet comes back and says, you know, wait a minute, that's not all true, spend some time. I think there's two things to remember. Um, first of all, um, what he's talking about is, cult right, when he says eat and drink, he's, uh, what I read it as is cultivate an attitude of gratitude. That that the point is, if you don't take enough time to enjoy the things that can give you enjoyment, then you're only going to notice the things that don't. That's cheating the world to not, right? If, if I don't, wait, what does it say? Because you're supposed to say 100 blessings a day, right? So if I don't eat that extra apple so I have the opportunity um, to, to say thank you for it, right? then I'm cheating the world in another way. The second thing is, this same Kohelet who says, eat and drink and don't worry about that stuff, also says, don't overdo eat and drink, because that'll make you miserable the other way. Right. I want to mention something about death. Yeah. Because here, it's, it's pretty much about the person himself or herself, but I think... Uh, Within his death, it's, it's hard to, to be when a close person dies. I mean, we, I, I'm I sorry, know, I didn't hear you. Point, I would, a, Can you say it louder? I'm sorry. That with death, it's not just so mechanic that we know that we will all die, we are all simple mortals. It's hard when you deal with the death of somebody close. Well, I don't think that he's saying that you, you, you shouldn't. I don't think that he's saying that you shouldn't mourn. It doesn't touch that topic at all. It's just saying, well, there's life and there's death and there's season. But it doesn't go I, deep. I, I, deep think, into I, I think what he's saying is there's a certain element when somebody dies that we recognize, well, everybody has to die. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't mourn or that you shouldn't mourn. Right? There's healthy mourning and there's depression. Right? Um, and we say when you've gone too far overboard, and it's not, I mean, he didn't talk that much about, well, he does talk a little bit about that. When you go too far overboard to, where, to the point where you can't enjoy the other pieces of life, right, then you've crossed from mourning to debilitating depression. After the Yom Kippur thing we were talking about, He's not saying there isn't right and wrong. I mean, there are real 
decisions. Well, there are, there is right and wrong. What he's saying is that some wicked people don't get punished. Right, but okay. Well, but that's a big statement. But, but, but it's, so it's, it, it's not when you're uh, repenting for what you did wrong, that's not the opposite of what he's saying, or don't care about. He's not saying you don't care about it when you do something wrong. He's no, but Judy, what Judy was saying is um, <laughs> that if you read this in a certain way, you know, the only solution is to eat and drink. And, and you could say, well, why bother with prayer? Why bother with, with, with God? Um, although, every, every time he's talked about God, he said, so eat and drink and recognize those things come from God. Yeah. So it's, it's God is, is yeah. gratitude. You don't have to pursue a religious life, I mean, according to this, right? I mean, you just have gratitude. Well, for him, no, it was a, it's a spiritual life. It's not a religious life. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he may not care so much whether or not you carry within 2,000 cubits of your house on Shabbat or something. Mm -hmm. um, but, but no, his spiritual life is a life of moderation where I'm able, right, my religion is able to come into balance because I am able to notice that there are good things in the world that come from God. And when, it, when bad things happen, I can turn, right, so bad things happen to bring me down this way, I can turn my eye the other way and also notice the good things that give thanks to God. But, but his religious life is totally balanced. It's, it's not pulling one way or the other. Um, the question about the, the, the translation here, because um, on verse 22, in part 322, um, the word, where, where the English says um, to enjoy his possessions, uh, for man to, to enjoy his possessions, the Hebrew is Yismaha Dan Bamasa. And I'm, I would read that as to take joy, the man takes joy in his deeds, mm -hmm. which has a very different sense to me because in the English of enjoying his possessions is, is materialism. You know, just you know, buy stuff and enjoy it, those of you. And and the you know in Hebrew that I think would be Rahush or something else. Well so, uh, so so this is what he's doing. So apparently the uh, the Targum, the uh, Aramaic translation, uh, does read my sad sort of his good deeds. The reason it's translated uh, this way here, um, he's separating Maasav is the opposite, or is Amalel. So the other place is enjoy his toil, and that's right. the overworking. And here, Maasav is the things that you've worked for, but it's more like legitimate work. It's not like the overbearing. The, 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 better, the better translation is Sanchina. Okay, what is Wherefore, I perceive there's nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his works. His works. <coughs> that that's the Utahian way. Who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? So, but well, but again, but if, if part of the other, purpose is the, the worry was was the worry. I mean, that's that's a fair translation. But this is getting at the worry that he had, which was you're going to work all this stuff and you're going to get your possession and you're going to um, you don't know who's going to inherit it. So part of his translation is, well, why don't you make sure you enjoy some of it too, and then you won't be so worried about it. But but it's it's um, it's maasab as opposed to uh, abama. Um, but yeah, I mean, his uh, his work is apparently for the the uh, Aramaic. Yeah. Do they suggest, or he suggests here that there's really no advantage in being wise or being righteous, and the, the wise man and the fool end up in the same place, and the righteous and the wicked end up in the same. Well, later he's going to talk about wisdom, wisdom, but but with the with the wise person, the way he talks wisdom, a wise person is a person who is able to. Right, he's the one. Right, his kind of wisdom is: I'm able to deal with life. I'm able to recognize that when good things happen, well, bad things will also happen. Uh, I'm not so bothered um, by these pieces. So, so he does, you know, talk about wisdom. Um, in a certain way, as far as you know, the, a man and a beast, a beast don't gather around like they're seeking wisdom. <laughs> right. So I, I think there is some. So advantage. wisdom is a great I, gift, so but overthinking a, can be your downfall. Again, it's the same thing with the moderation. Uh, if you overdo it, overdo wisdom, you think too much. And again, it's only a problem when you've gotten to the point where, right, if you, if you. Uh, drink too much that you uh, become a drunkard and you can't hold a job and you can't write, you, you take it off. If you become depressed too much that you can't get out of bed um, to go to work, 
um, then you've gone, you know, overboard in the, in the pathology. If you're, if you think about the world and wisdom gives you strength, but when you've taken it over where um, your life has become miserable because you think about these things all day, then he starts counseling. Try to be a little bit more animal life. Don't worry too much. I want to go uh, to do a little bit of chapter four um, because he says the same answer to the problem in a different way. Um, again, the problem that, or, or his answer is, he's saying the problem with the world is not the problems that we think of in the world. The problem is that we spend too much time worrying about the things that bother us in the world. He's going to um, change it slightly. I just say that the real tragedy of let's uh, of any tragic event um, is not that the event happens, but real tragedy is when someone has to deal with it alone. So um, let's start reading chapter four. I further observed all the oppression that goes on under the sun, the tears of the oppressed with none to comfort them, and the power of their oppressors with none to comfort them. Then I accounted right, those... So by the way, that line, um, uh, there's no one to comfort them. I don't expect that you know um, the Book of Lamentations by heart, um, but uh, that, that is, uh, how is this city lying in ruins with none to comfort her? That's a, a technical uh, term. Right, and, and I'm just going to read a piece from this commentary. Uh, in sharp contrast to the prophets, Kohelet does not demand a cessation to oppression or even condemn the oppressors. The possibility of improvement does not seem to, incur, to occur to him. In his world, after all, there is nothing new. A twisted thing cannot be made straight. The oppressed could, however, receive comfort from their fellows, and the fact that they do not is what really pains him. Uh, again, to take to take death, the tragedy um, of death um, is not just the death. It would be if there was nobody, right? He's taking it to the next level, the Krishna level. Right? The tragedy of death would be if nobody came to the Shiva house um, to, to comfort. Them. Then I accounted those who died long since more fortunate than those who are still living. And happier than either are those who have not yet come into being, being and have not witnessed, never witnessed the miseries that go on under the sun. Yeah. Uh, that one. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, here's it, here, here he's saying uh, it, the, the, the ones who die are better than the ones who are alive. Yeah. And better yet, <laughs> there, there is. Um, Right, so, so I'll say two things about there is a famous debate in the Talmud um, uh, where it says Hill, the houses of Hillel and the houses of Shammai uh, debated with each other for three and a half uh, years. Right, and, this is the, and then that ends with you know these and these are the uh, words of the living God, um, but the, the law is like Hillel. Uh, after they um, discuss that, they keep on talking. They said, would it be better for man to have been created uh, or man not to have been created? Apparently, the Greek version is to say it's better for man not to have been created, so we should all go commit suicide. Um, but the, the Jewish say, so, the, so their solution was, it's better for a man to have not been created, but since he's been created, let him examine his deeds and try to make the best of it. Um, something like that. Uh, the rabbis, uh, I, I've actually used this line in a funeral um, before. Um, well, not the line as it's written for this. It pretty much stinks. <laughs> but but the, the, the rabbi's view, they, they, they compare it to a metaphor of a ship. Um, and it was, let's see if I can get this right. Um, so a person's uh, standing uh, at, at port, um, and when he sees uh, the ship coming into port, uh, he's clapping. Um, but when he sees a ship going out, he's just watching. And someone asks him, why are you clapping for the ship coming into port? And he says, well, I know now that this ship has been on a safe, you know, it's completed its journey safely. It's bringing all this great stuff to me. That one that's going out, uh, who knows what's going to happen. Uh, and therefore, right, they say, that's what's better about the day of death, because at least you've been able to see the life and what they've accomplished uh, or something like that. It works better in some contexts than others, right? Yeah. Uh, at least you're able to see what happens when a baby, when a baby is born. You have no idea. Um, I'll 
go with those of you who say that this is depressing because <laughs> when I have no idea what's going to happen uh, when a baby's born, I sort of go the other way, right? We have a, Elijah's chair at the bris because every baby could be the Messiah. We have no idea what's going to happen. Um, but, uh, right, it is a fact that we all uh, do experience pain. I, I could see this uh, an analogy to the situation in Syria uh, where you know people living, for example, under ISIS control, that they experience very deep oppression uh, and, and um, perhaps it's better those that have not been born yet um, have the better of it. You do get some poetry out of uh, war time after it says some of that. Right, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, I've seen people live in various countries around the world living in deep poverty and misery, and you say to yourself, you know, why should people have to suffer that way in, in some respects? It's better that they, they were not born than to have yeah. to live that way. And most of this book, has, has been pointed out a couple of times, is written in the first world. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, let's, let's, let's read on. Uh, verse 4. Okay. And I have also noted that all labor and skillful enterprise come from men's envy of each other, another futility in pursuit of wind. True, the fool holds his hands together and has to eat his own flesh, but no less truly better is a handful of gratification than two fistfuls of labor, which is pursuit of wind. Okay, so um, again, right, there's two different, right, this is a chapter on uh, companionship. One way that people um, experience the other in the world uh, is as a competitor, right, and you're jealous, um, and, and there is uh, an element of you know, competition leads to great results, and that's, um, you know, um, that, that's how the market economy works. Um, but there, he, 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 is, he does have this feeling of, we spend so much time competing with each other and working all the time, and we don't have uh, time, right? The wise worker is the one who goes to work from nine to five, works with the person who's working uh, next to him or her, uh, and then goes home and has a handful of gratification. The foolish worker uh, is the one who works from nine to five and then works another shift.